Everyone's had the thought, I could be a professional gamer. I love games, I'm good at them, I'm... Okay, slow the frag down here, boss. It takes a lot more than being number one on the leaderboards to earn serious bank in the modern gaming world. You need a few additional... <clears throat> Assets. Yes, you've got to be handy with a controller, but you also need to bring something else to the table. Maybe your natural charm or knowledge of video game history combined with quality conversation skills. Or you could simply be extremely, ridiculously good looking. If you can combine what makes you awesome with the dedication needed to wake up at the crack of noon, drink Mountain Dew all day, and frag fools with a smile, then you may find yourself on the next list of 10 people who became filthy rich off video games. Carlos Ocelot Rodriguez Some people make money talking about games or dressing up as game characters, but this dude, he makes money kicking people's collective ass at video games. Again and again. Carlos Rodriguez, known to the opponents he's stomping as Ocelot, has been called the David Beckham of esports, gaining fame due to his talent, looks, and love of scarves. Between streaming, sponsorship, and tournament winnings, it's estimated he pulls in a stunning $900,000 a year, half of which goes to purchasing new stylish neckwear. He began his domination in World of Warcraft and rose to fame playing League of Legends for German esports company SK Gaming. He recently started his own organization, G2 Esports. He's not all perfect, though, Ocelot has been known to bug opponents and teammates for his loud yelling at tournaments. Matt, Made Shot Hog. You don't always have to be the best player on a team to be the most financially successful. Sometimes it simply takes a little bit of dedication and attrition. Nade Shot, or Matt Hog to the unhip, and his family, is best known as a Call of Duty veteran who played through several seasons on the Major League Gaming circuit. He's a co-owner of Optic Gaming, the same company he started to play for professionally in 2010. Hog always played well, but it's the avid streaming following he built up that really brings him in the big bucks. Along with sponsorships from Red Bull and various other accessory companies, it's estimated that Hog made over a million dollars during his pro career. Only a couple hundred thousand of that was actually from his tournament winnings, though. Nade freaking shot brings home the bacon by being a steady bacon-making gaming dude. Natalie Zombie Unicorn Casanova Often rated as one of the hottest gaming streamers, Zombie Unicorn isn't making bank yet, but she's about to. She's already built up over 145,000 followers on Twitch and makes a full-time living telling poop and fart jokes on the internet. Her words, not mine, along with her social media accounts and voice acting gigs, Casanova seems ready to break out big, which she very well may do as she's appearing on a new reality TV show debuting this March called Kicking and Screaming. She'll team up with a survivalist to see if this beauty can tame the beast that is the South Pacific jungle. In an attempt to bring home half a million dollars, she'll be out there with nothing more than her trademark pink hair, a few bags of makeup, and the help of a Boy Scout leader. You know, whatever works. Jonathan Fatality Wendell. One of the first people to make serious money in gaming, Jonathan Wendell became a pro player in 1999, a time when the idea of a person making a living playing video games seemed ludicrous. Well, that sure didn't stop Fatality from dominating the virtual playing field of Quake 3 Arena. During his playing days, he earned almost a half a million dollars from tournament winnings and sponsorship. He rose to national fame after appearing on MTV's True Life reality show and showcasing his dedication to his craft, training eight hours a day. He eventually left pro gaming after having formed his own gaming accessories company. He was inducted into the International Video Game Hall of Fame and received a Lifetime Achievement Award for eSports. Another noteworthy piece of his legacy was that he was one of the first guys to use the number one as a letter L. Definitely not as cool. Team Newbie the sequel to Defense of the Ancients, better known as Dota 2, is one of the most popular games in the world. In 2014, Team Newbie, a Chinese esports organization sponsored by billionaire Wang Yui, took the top prize at the International Dota 2 tournament, earning them a wallet-stuffing $5 million. The prize money was split five ways, making each member an instant millionaire. With that first substantial victory under their belt, Newbie would go on to win several more Dota 2 tournaments later that year. The original team would eventually part ways, but their legacy still remains. The current team continues to play Dota 2 and has added squads for League of Legends and Hearthstone as well. Time will tell if the next generation will be able to bring the same amount of dough as the first original five. Daniel Dendi Ishutin. 
playing Dota professionally for over a decade, Daniel Ishutin is very, very good at the game. Alongside his team, the Ukrainian gamer better known as Dendi took the top prize at the Dota 2 International in 2011. The tournament in question was the very first of its kind to offer a million dollar grand prize. His team, Natus Vincere, took the top prize and Ishutin's cut was $200,000. His team would continue to dominate, appearing in the finals for the following two years of the tournament. Dendi became the team's breakout star thanks in part to his appearance in the documentary Free to Play. The 2014 film focused on three players, including Ishutin, leading up to the 2011 international tournament. His tragic backstory and unique style of gameplay brought him a large amount of attention but at the end of the day, his skills brought home the victory. With over half a million Twitch followers, Dendi still dominates as one of the best solo Dota players in the world. Rume Hafu Wang The exact income for her gaming lifestyle is unknown for Rume Wang, but with almost 450,000 followers on Twitch, estimates are quite high. Better known in the gaming world as Hafu, Wang is a 25-year-old female gamer born in Massachusetts who was dominating the World of Warcraft leaderboards when she was only 17. After a brief hiatus in college, Hafu realized she don't need no stinking schooling. Her good looks and easygoing demeanor, along with her legit skills, made her a hit on Twitch. A rise in followers and fame soon followed. Most days, she rolls out of the rack around around noon, fires up a Hearthstone session, and plays the day away. She makes very few bucks from online donations these days, as her income comes heavily from sponsors and from her social media status. Catherine Mystic Gun Some may Twitch and some may cosplay. More and more are hosting their own shows, and lots and lots of female gamers kick ass with those two analog sticks in their hands. Only a few, however, can do it all. And the one whose name is at the top of that list is Catherine Gunn. Recognized by suckers she schooled as Mystic, Gunn was an original Xbox Live beta tester and an OG gamer girl. Stamping her name across the dead or alive scene, she was the winner of the WCG Ultimate Gamer television show on the Sci-Fi Channel in 2010. A crisp, cool check for 100k was her reward. While still competing in fighting game tournaments, she moved into game commentating eventually turning heads as a cosplayer. She currently streams and is hosting a game-related show on Newegg's YouTube channel. PewDiePie Felix Kilberg, known to the world as PewDiePie, has over 53 million YouTube subscribers and pulls in an estimated $4 million a year. The Swedish-born streamer started putting videos online in 2010. Within two years, he had over a million fans, and just two years after that, he was appearing on shows like South Park. Easily among the most well-known celebrities to make money off gaming, Time Magazine once labeled him as one of its 100 most influential people. With more fame, however, comes more attention, as Mr. Pie recently found out. A recent Wall Street Journal article accused him of making anti-Semitic jokes in his comedy act, leading to his biggest sponsors dropping out on him. Felix responded to the controversy, apologizing for a joke gone too far. Only time will tell at this point if PewDiePie can maintain his current position. Jessica Negri When life imitates art, it can be a financial windfall. Of course, you may think that video games are not art, in which case you're wrong. Sometimes life is about agreeing to disagree, but you're still wrong. One thing that's safe to assume everyone agrees on is that Pikachu is the cutest of all Pokemon. Jessica Negri became a professional cosplayer by giving the original Pocket Monster a sexy makeover at the 2009 San Diego Comic Con. Her outfit went viral, sparking an insane idea. Dudes like sexed up versions of their favorite characters in real life. After a turn as Juliet Starling from Lollipop Chainsaw, Jessica was soon pulling amazing adaptations at Comic-Cons across the country. Last year, she started her own Patreon account, and almost immediately the cash started flowing in as fans showed their support to the tune of $9,000 a month. It's over 9,000! 9,000?! There's no way that could be right! So what game would you play professionally? Let us know in the comments below if you're a person who can make money virtually. There's only one way to find out. Start playing, start streaming, and make sure you have another job. It's a hard job, even if it seems fun. So be prepared for failure before fame. Don't forget to share this video and subscribe to CBR's YouTube channel so you too can learn some more cool things about cool people before other people, making you the coolest. Thanks for watching.